Hi everybody and welcome to Simply Scuba. In today's deep dive, we're going to be taking a look at transmitters. So in our modern digital age, if we buy something that doesn't have some kind of wireless technology inside of it, it's a little bit weird. I mean, you can get light bulbs with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth enabled gizmos everywhere. So a lot of new dive computers are coming with wireless air integration in their hardware and in their software. Now, years and years ago, we never even had uh, submersible pressure gauges. So you just knew how much gas you had in your tank when you started the dive and roughly how long that would last. And that was it. Then came along things like J-valves. J-valves were special tank valves that could hold a special reserve of air inside of the tank so that when you actually ran out of gas, you then pulled on a little lever and it would release that reserve so that you knew that you could get back to the surface as long as you flicked that switch at the beginning of the dive. Nowadays, we have wireless digital transmitters that can send tank pressure data directly to your dive computer, so you don't even need a submersible pressure gauge. Now, there is a debate online, because of course there is, it's the internet, about whether we're happy to shift 100% over to wireless gas management or to actually keep a SPG or whether we can just trust that transmitter will do the job. But we're not gonna be talking about that uh, sort of much here. Uh, that's a completely separate video and I am sure that there will be comments down below about people who use transmitters and, and people who are too good for transmitters. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about how transmitters work and the differences between them. Wireless air integration works by having a transmitter fitted to your regulators and a wireless enabled dive computer that it will talk to. The transmitter will be fairly small and simply screws into one of the high pressure ports on your regulator. Some transmitters need a flow rate limiter. Uh, it basically, if you pressurize your regulators too quickly, that sudden hit of high pressure air can damage the delicate sensor inside. So you do need to fit a restrictor on the inside, but they usually come with the transmitter if that transmitter needs one. Inside of the transmitter will be a small chipboard, a battery and a transmitter, a sort of antenna. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of other clever things inside, I'm sure, but um, what this basically does is when it senses pressure being run into the transmitter, the transmitter wakes up and starts broadcasting the pressure that it's reading from your tank. If the pressure continues, the transmitter will continue to broadcast that reading every few seconds. When the, bro uh, when the pressure drops down to zero, the transmitter will continue to uh, transmit zero for a little while before it just switches itself off. Your dive computer is the receiver and when it's set up correctly, it's listening out for that signal. Every time it hears that signal, it updates the screen on your computer and logs any changes. The signal pulse that uh, transmitter emits is usually broadcast of one of multiple frequencies um, or sort of separate codes. If there are a whole bunch of scuba divers in the water, all with similar transmitters, all broadcasting on the same frequency, then everybody's computer is going to get a little bit confused. So transmitters can broadcast on a range of different frequencies, basically, so that they don't muddle up anyone else's transmitter. Because of this range of sort of frequencies, you need to pair your computer to your transmitter so that you know that they're talking to one another and they're talking to the right transmitter and not picking up someone else's signal. Now, they'll do that in a few different ways that I'm gonna talk about in a second, but basically before the dive, you need to pair your transmitter and your dive computer so that they are talking to one another. The conversation is usually one way with the transmitter doing all of the talking and the computer just they're listening for whatever it says. But there are some combinations that go both ways, um, but I've never really come up with a good idea sort of why the dive computer would want to send a signal to the transmitter. And finally, most transmitters today will have an LED somewhere on them, and there are two main reasons for these. So the basic LEDs, these are just a little light that blinks whenever the transmitter is on. 
Before these, there was no real way to know if your transmitter and your computer just weren't pairing for whatever reason, or if the battery was simply dead. So now they have a little light, so it's not a bright light, it's not a big beacon, it's just a little green light that usually blinks every now and then to save the battery obviously, um, but it's enough to let you know that the transmitter is at least on, so then you can diagnose where that uh, break in the link is. Other transmitters use the LED as a signal to your buddy. When you have a full tank, your transmitter will have a, uh, a light on the end of it that blinks green. Uh, half a tank, it will start to blink yellow. And then when you're running low on gas, you're down to your last quarter or so, it will start to blink red. So your dive buddy knows roughly how much gas you have left. And if you're low, they can then let you know that, oh, hey, maybe we need to uh, start heading up because you're low on gas, uh, if they're not paying attention. There are a few pairing methods, uh, pairing a transmitter to your dive computer. The first one is pretty simple, but needs to be done quite frequently. So when you first pressurize the transmitter, it will broadcast a special pairing code to any dive computers in range, listening out for that code. What you need to do is in that first two minutes or so, it's normally about two minutes it's, it uh, broadcasts that special pairing code, is to set your dive computer up to a pairing mode or a listening mode or something so it's listening out for that specific code and then hold your computer close to the transmitter so it gets a really strong signal and you know that they are pairing together if you're diving a lot then this pairing will last a fair while to be honest uh, it's only if you don't use the transmitter for quite a few days or a week or a month so then you may need to pair the dive computer to that transmitter again because they have certain number of uh, sort of bands that they can transmit over and if there's another transmitter around they don't want to be pairing on the same uh, the same sort of frequency basically Another style of pairing is usually called permanent pairing because it's fairly permanent. These uh, usually work by entering the serial number of your transmitter into your dive computer. That way your computer will always be listening out for that specific transmitter. Even if it's been months since they last spoke or they've both had a battery change, they should still be paired together. As long as they're in range, obviously, they should be paired. There are some differences. Uh, there are no universal transmitters, unfortunately, that work with all, uh, all dive computers. That just doesn't exist. Uh, there are some that work with a few, quite a few, but not all dive computers. The type of transmitter that works with a few different brands is Pelagic Transmitters or OEM. Uh, so Pelagic have changed hands and sold their technology to a few brands throughout the years. So if your dive computer and transmitter are any of these brands, then they should talk to one another. So Aqualung, Apex, Aeris, Hollis, Oceanic and Shearwater, they should all talk to one another because they're all basically made by Pelagic or the transmitters, the transmitter technology is basically made by Pelagic, but do double check first. So these will all be permanent pairings, so you enter the serial number and they are paired for life. Most other brands tend to be unique to that brand. So Sunto with Sunto, Scuba Pro with Scuba Pro, Maris to Maris, Garmin to Garmin. They've all created their own wireless transmitter systems uh, that only talk to their own dive computers. So you can't go mixing and matching, unfortunately. Double check which does uh, sort of which type of pairing, but some also have some special features as well, uh, sort of above the rest. So some may have two way communication, uh, like I mentioned earlier. Some may have better ranges because they use a different uh, sort of frequency. There was even some that I don't think they make anymore that could transmit text messages from a laptop on the boat. Um, you basically lower down a transmitter into the water connected to your laptop and then other divers in the water, as long as they were in a sensible range, you could like literally send them a text message so that they'd know what to do. Um, but I don't believe they make them anymore, to be honest. Uh, and again, there were some, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they make them anymore, but some that could actually act like location beacons. Uh, so you could attach one of these transmitters to your buddy, uh, or you could lower it off a rope off the back of your boat, and 
on your dive computer, you can literally see which direction it was uh, on your computer. So navigating back to where you want was pretty easy. They were cool, uh, but they were quite expensive for the recreational market, so I don't think they make them anymore. Now, a lot of dive computers today boast that they can connect to multiple transmitters. So if you're diving with multiple stage tanks and you want to monitor all of their pressures all on the same dive computer, you can do that. So you just need to be sure that they don't interfere with one another. If you have two transmitters in close proximity working on the same or similar frequencies, then they can create some interference and neither can get the signal through or you'll just kind of lose connection with one of the transmitters or something. So some manufacturers have built their transmitters to resist this. Um, they just broadcast on complementary frequencies. Basically, I'm sure it's a lot more complicated than that, but that goes over my head. And others uh, actually make different variants of the same transmitter. So you'll often find like a standard gray colored transmitter, and then you can find a, uh, a yellow transmitter or a green transmitter that for all intents and purposes, apart from the color, look exactly the same because they kind of are the same transmitter, but they're made to work in close proximity to one another. So if you take two gray transmitters or two yellow transmitters, then you'll be mostly fine, but there is a chance that they will interfere with one another on occasion. So it's best if you're diving with multiple tanks to use different transmitters. So use a gray for that tank and a yellow for that tank. But it's very much just, just double check the literature, what the, uh, the manufacturer says about specific transmitters, because some boast up to 10 transmitters. Granted, you're not gonna have 10 stage tanks kind of all on you at the same time, but if they're kind of in close proximity, you'd like to think that they actually made them so that they can talk at the same time and your dive computer can pick out who's saying what. Changing the batteries in a transmitter is pretty easy. Uh, I, to be honest, it's much, much better if you can take it to your local dive center though, uh, because they will do it properly using the correct tools and using the correct replacement parts. The last thing you wanna do is to reuse the old O-ring and just buy a new battery uh, or put the wrong voltage battery in the transmitter. I mean, there are some cases where just putting the battery in the upside down the wrong way around could irreversibly damage the transmitter. So if you are thinking of doing it yourself, do be very careful, take note of which way the battery goes in, because it doesn't always say like in torches, it doesn't say positive this way. Um, do be very careful and use the correct parts. You can't replace that O-ring with just any old O-ring. It has to be the correct O-ring. And of course, read the instructions all the way before you even start to pull it apart, because you'll have no one to blame but yourself if something goes wrong. So do be very careful if you want to change the battery yourself. Technically speaking, it's not that difficult. You just have to take out a few screws uh, and then just sort of replace a battery and an O-ring. That's not particularly technical or hard, but you do want to make sure that you're doing it properly and you should never have to force it. If you're forcing something together, you're probably doing it wrong. Other than that, there's not a lot of things you need to do with a transmitter. They just sit on their regulators and they do their job. Uh, one of the usual recommendations is to pop them on a short high pressure hose because they're pretty expensive to damage and they're a short rigid piece of plastic and metal. So I've heard a story if um, someone lifts your scuba set out of the water by grabbing it by the transmitter, it's gonna damage it and they had to get a brand new transmitter. Or if it's quite prominent on your first aid and you bump into something, they're gonna break, they're, they're not bulletproof. So a lot of divers fit them to a short like 15 centimeter or six inch hose, um, just so they've got some flexibility. The only thing you do have to remember is to fit a swivel pin, a small little dude with a couple O-rings that fit on the inside of the transmitter like that flow restrictor. And that's about it for transmitters. Personally, I do like air integration. It's quite interesting to study your air consumption rate at certain points of the dive afterwards. And it's nice to know if I run low on gas, my dive computer will tell me, it will actually alert me because you can set alarms and alerts. But 
I do like to keep a brass gauge as a backup. No real reason why, touch wood. A transmitter has never failed at me on a dive, but I do like a trusty SPG just in case something should go wrong. Uh, because yeah, it's an analog gauge, it can never run out of batteries. Let me know what you think about transmitters in the comments below, as if I need to get you guys to encourage you to comment down below. But yeah, let us know what you think about transmitters. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving.